Chapter 21 Pramaya Abhideya Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti Vijay Kumar and Brajanath were impressed when they heard the deliberation concerning Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti. They became firmly convinced that one must accept Hari Nam and Diksha from a Siddha Mahatma, great perfected soul, in order to enter the supreme abode. They therefore decided to accept Diksha from Siddha Babaji Maharaj the very next day, so as not to lose any time. Vijay Kumar had already received Diksha Mantra from his family guru in his boyhood. Brajanath, however, had not received any Diksha Mantras other than the Gayatri Mantra. They had both clearly understood from the revered Babaji's instructions that the jiva goes to hell if he chants mantras received from a guru who is not a Vaishnava. Therefore, according to the regulations of Shastra, when proper discrimination has awakened, he should again take diksha from a Shuddha Vaishnava guru. Particularly, one can achieve perfection in the chanting of his mantra very quickly by accepting the mantra from a Siddha Bhakta. Thinking like this, they both decided they would go to Mayapur the next morning, bathe in the Ganga, and then take Diksha from the most revered Babaji. The next morning, they bathed in the Ganga and applied Tilak to the twelve places on their bodies. They then arrived before Raghunath Das Babaji and offered prostrated obeisances at his lotus feet. Babaji Maharaj, being a Siddha Vaishnava, understood their minds, but as a matter of etiquette he said, Why have you come here today so early in the morning? What is the matter? Vijay Kumar and Brajanath humbly replied, O oh Master, you know that we are very lowly and destitute of spiritual wealth, so kindly take pity on us. Babaji Mahashai was very pleased to hear them speak in this way. He called them into his kutia separately and bestowed upon them the mantra consisting of eighteen syllables. On receiving and chanting the mantra, they both became intoxicated with Mahaprem and started dancing, crying out, Jai Goranga, Jai Goranga. Around their necks they wore three strands of tulsi beads. The beautiful sacred thread was draped about their bodies, which were marked with tilak in twelve places. Their faces were charming. They exhibited some sattvika vikar, transformations of ecstasy, and tears flowed incessantly from their eyes. When Babaji Mahashai saw such beautiful forms, he embraced them and said, Today you have sanctified me. Again and again they relished the dust from Babaji's lotus feet and rubbed it on their heads and all their limbs. At that time, in accordance with Brajanath's previous arrangement, their two servants arrived with a large quantity of food offerings, boga, for Sriman Mahaprabhu. With folded hands, Vijay Kumar and Brajanath requested that the boga preparations should be offered, and the venerable chief among the bhaktas of Sri Vasanga instructed the pujari to offer the boga to the deities of Sri Sri Pancha Tattva. Conch shells and bells sounded, and the Vaishnavas took up cymbals, cartels and mridangas, and began to sing the boga arti song before Sriman Mahaprabhu. Many Vaishnavas gathered, and the boga offering was accomplished with great ceremony. Arrangements were then made for distributing prasadam in the Natya Mandir, dancing hall. Hearing the loud sounds of Harinam, all the Vaishnavas assembled together, bringing their lotus with them. Then they loudly chanted the glories of Mahaprasad and began to honor Prasad. Brajanath and Vijay Kumar did not want to sit down immediately because they were waiting for Maha Mahaprasad, the remnants of the Guru and the Vaishnavas. However, the foremost of the respected Babaji's made them sit down, saying, You are Grihasta Vaishnavas. We will be blessed by offering prostrated obeisances unto your lotus feet. Vijay Kumar and Brajanath said humbly, with folded hands, You are great renounced Vaishnavas. We will be very fortunate if we can partake of your ambrosial remnants, and it will be an offense if we sit with you. The Vaishnavas replied, so far as Vaishnavism is concerned, there is no difference between a householder and a renunciant. Vaishnavas are compared only according to their devotion. 
the more advanced Vaishnava is simply the one who has the deeper devotion for Sri Krishna. They all sat together conversing in this way and honoring Prasad, but Vijay Kumar and Brajanath waited quietly, faithfully keeping their Prasad in front of them. Some of the Vaishnavas who were respecting Prasad noticed this and understanding their motives said to Raghunath Das Babaji, O chief of the Vaishnavas, please be kind to your faithful disciples, otherwise they will not take Prasad. When the elderly Babaji heard the Vaishnavas' request, he gave some of his prasad to Vijay and Brajanath. They accepted his remnants with great faith, uttering Sri Gurave Namaha, and began to honor prasad. While the bhaktas were taking prasad, some would call out, Sadhus, be very careful not to overeat, and all glories to the greatness of the prasadam. Oh, what an unprecedented splendor arose from the Natya Mandir of Sri Vasangam at that time. Everyone perceived Sri Sachi Devi, Sita and Malini Devi bringing prasad, while Sri Man Mahaprabhu sat and lovingly took that prasad with his dear associates. Seeing this, the Vaishnavas forgot to take their own prasad. They all watched motionless, while tears of great joy gently trickled from their eyes, and their hands which were in the act of bringing prasad to their mouths remain fixed for as long as this Leela was manifest. After a short time, the Leela disappeared from their sight, and they gazed at one another and wept. Then the sweet taste of that prasad defied description. As if with a single voice, all the bhaktas said, These two sons of brahmanas are recipients of Gorahari's mercy. For this reason, Sriman Mahaprabhu has manifested his Leela in this festival today. Rajanath and Vijay Kumar wept and said, We are worthless, wretched and destitute. We know nothing at all. We could only see all these things today by the causeless mercy of our Guru and the Vaishnavas. Today our taking birth has become meaningful. When Vijay Kumar and Brajanath had honored Prasad, they took permission of the Vaishnavas and returned home. From that day on, they bathed daily in the Ganga and then offered Dandavat Pranam at the feet of their preceptor. They would then take darshan of the deity forms of Sri Krishna in the Mandir and circumambulate Tulsi. In this way, they accepted some kind of instruction every day. After four or five days had elapsed, they presented themselves one evening at Sri Vasanga. Sandhya Arti and Nam Sankirtan were already over, and Sri Raghunath Das Babaji sat in his kutia, softly chanting Sri Nam in a sweet voice. They both offered Dandavat Pranam at his lotus feet, and he lovingly placed his lotus hand on their heads, seated them, and inquired about their welfare. Brajanath saw this as an opportunity and said, Master, by your mercy, we have properly understood Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti. Now we are very anxious to understand Raganuga Bhakti, so kindly instruct us about this. Babaji was extremely pleased to hear this and said, Sri Gorachandra has taken both of you as his own, so there is nothing that should not be given to you. Listen very carefully as I explain Raganuga Bhakti. First, I offer my Dandavat Pranam again and again at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa Goswami, whom Sriman Mahaprabhu liberated from the association of the Muslims and to whom he instructed Rasa Tattva at Prayag. I then take shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, who is like a black bee tasting the nectar of that Rajaras. The supremely merciful Sri Garanga Mahaprabhu liberated him from the bottomless pit of gross materialism. Then, by entrusting him within the hands of Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami, he bestowed all perfection upon him. Now, before describing Raghunuga Bhakti, I should explain the Swarup of Ragatmika Bhakti. Prajanath, but I would first like to know what is Rag? Babaji, when materialistic people are in contact with the objects of the senses, they naturally become deeply attached to an endless variety of material sense enjoyment. 
This intense attachment in the heart is called Vishayarag. When they glance upon some beautiful object, the eyes become restless, and in the heart there is an attraction, Ranjakata, towards the object of beauty, an attachment, Rag, to it. Rag Bhakti is the state in which Krishna becomes the sole object of Rag. Sri Rupa Goswami has defined the word Rag in the following way. Ishte svara siki raga, parama vishtata bhavet, tan mai ya bhaved bhakti, satra ragat mikodita. Rag is the unquenchable loving thirst, prema mai trishna, for the object of one's affection, which gives rise to spontaneous and intense absorption, svarasiki parama vistita, in that object. Rag mai bhakti is the performance of seva, such as stringing garlands, with such intense rag. Rag is the absolute, parama, and undivided, swarasiki, absorption, avistita, in one's own particular object of worship. When devotion to Krishna comes to the stage of ragamayi, it is called ragatmika bhakti. In summary, it can be said that intense hankering for Krishna that is saturated with prem, premamayi, is called ragatmika bhakti. It is auspicious that a person in whose heart such rag has not arisen should strive to cultivate such bhakti by behaving according to vidhi, the rules and regulations of Shastra. The principles at work in vaidhi bhakti are fear, respect and reverence, whereas the only principle at work in ragatmika bhakti is loba, or greed, in relation to Sri Krishna's lila. Brajanath Who has the adhika, qualification, for ragamayi bhakti? Babaji Vaidhi Shraddha bestows the adhika for vaidhi bhakti, and similarly, loba mayi Shraddha, faith imbued with greed for Krishna's braj lila, bestows the adhika for ragamayi bhakti. The bhav of the Brajabhasis towards Krishna is the supreme example of ragatmika bhakti. One who has the great fortune to have greed, loba, to obtain the same bhav, sentiment, as the Brajabhasis have towards Krishna, has the adhika for raganuga bhakti. Brajanath, what are the symptoms of such loba? Babaji, when one hears about the intensely sweet bhavs of the Brajabhasis, One's intelligence, buddhi apeksha, begins to consider how one may enter into those dealings. That desire, apeksha, is the symptom that loba has awakened. A person who has the adhika for vaidhi bhakti tests everything on the platform of intelligence, knowledge of shastra, and reasoning. And when he hears Krishna kata, he only accepts it if these three support it. However, there is no such consideration in Rag Marg, for intelligence, knowledge of Shastra, and reasoning are not desired on this path. All that is needed is the greed for the sentiments of the Brajabhasis. What are the sweet bhavs of the Brajabhasis towards Krishna? Is it possible for me to obtain such bhavs? How can this be obtained? This intense yearning is the symptom of greed, and one who does not have it does not have the adhika for Raganuga Bhakti. This you should understand. Brajanath What is the process of Raganuga Bhakti? Babaji The sadhak who has developed greed towards the beautiful service mood, seva, of a particular Brajabhasi, always remembers and meditates on his seva to that personality. He is absorbed in the mutual pastimes of his beloved Sri Krishna, with that Brajabhasi, and he constantly resides in Braj, either physically or within the mind, having agreed to obtain his or her bhav. He follows that Brajabhasi's example and always renders seva in two ways. Externally, he serves as a practicing sadhak, and internally, he renders seva with the bhavs, bhavana purvaka, of his siddha deha. This is the process of Raganuga Bhakti. Brajanath 
What is the relationship between Raganuga Bhakti and the Angas of Vaidhi Bhakti? Babaji. The Angas of Vaidhi Bhakti, Shravanam, Kirtanam, and so on, are also included in the Raganuga Sadak's practice. The Sadak follows the eternal residence of Braja, and consequently he tastes the eternal bliss of service. At the same time, he observes the Angas of Vaidhi Bhakti with his external body. Brajanath, please explain the glories of Raganuga Bhakti. Babaji, Raganuga Bhakti very quickly bestows that fruit which one cannot obtain even by observing the Angas of Vaidhi Bhakti with firm faith, Nishta, for a long time. Devotion on the Vaidhi Marg is weak because it depends on rules and regulations. Whereas Raganuga Bhakti is naturally strong because it is completely independent. When one adopts the spiritual conception of following in the footsteps of a loving resident of Braj, Rag is awakened which always involves following the process of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam and Atmanivedanam. Taste for following in the footsteps of the Rajabhasis is only awakened in those whose hearts are nirgun, beyond material attributes. This is why the greed for Raganuga Bhakti is supremely rare and the root of supreme auspiciousness. There are as many types of Raganuga Bhakti as there are of Ragatmika Bhakti. Brajanath, how many kinds of Ragatmika Bhakti are there? Babaji, there are two kinds of Ragatmika Bhakti that which is based on transcendental lust to satisfy Krishna, Kama Rupa, and that which is based on relationship, Sambandha Rupa. Brajanath, please explain the difference between Kama Rupa and Sambandha Rupa. Babaji, it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 7, 1, 30 to 31, Kamad Veshad Bayat Snehad Yata Bhaktiye Shvare Manaha Aveshya Tad Agam Hitva Bahavas Tad Gatim Gata Gopya Kamad Bayat Kamso Dve Sach Chad Yadayo Nripaha Sambandad Vrishnaya Snehad Yuyam Bhaktya Vayam Vibo Many people have attained the Supreme by complete absorption of the mind in devotion through lusty desires, calm, envy, dvesha, fear, bhaya, or affection, sneha, and by giving up the faulty aspects of those sentiments. The gopis have attained the supreme by fixing their minds on Krishna through calm, kangsa by bhaya, shishupal and other kings by dvesha, the yadus by family relationships, sambandha, you, the Pandavas, by affection, Sneha, and we sages, Narad and other rishis, by Bhakti. Six principles are mentioned here, namely calm, lust, Baya, fear, Dvesha, envy, Sambandha, family relationship, Sneha, affection, and Bhakti, devotion. Two of these, Baya, fear, and Dvesha, envy, should not be imitated because they are unfavorable sentiments. Now, there are two kinds of sneha. The first is associated with Sakyabhav and is included in Vaidhi Bhakti. The second kind is related to Prem and has no application in the field of sadhan. Therefore, sneha has no place in the practice of Raganuga sadhan bhakti. The words Bhaktiya Vayam in the shloka 7131 mean that we, Narad and other sages, have attained the Supreme by Bhakti. The word Bhakti here should be understood to mean Vaidhi Bhakti, and may refer either to the Vaidhi Bhakti practices of the sages such as Narad, or to devotion mixed with Gyan. The words Tadgatim Gata mean that many people have attained the Supreme. It is important to have a clear understanding of this sentence. A single ray of sunlight, Kiran, and the sun itself are one and the same substance, Vastu. Similarly, Brahman and Krishna 
are also one and the same substance. Brahman is simply Krishna's bodily effulgence. The Jnani Bhaktas merge into the Brahman existence, and so do Krishna's enemies when he has personally killed them. Some of them obtain Sarupya Bhas, a semblance of Sarupya, or having a form similar to Bhagavan's, and remain immersed in the bliss of Brahman. According to the Brahmanda Purana, they stay in Siddha Loka, the liberated world beyond the material world. Two kinds of jivas reside in Siddha Loka, those who have attained perfection through the cultivation of knowledge, Gyan Siddha, and Asuras who have been killed by Sri Bhagavan. Amongst these Gyan Siddhas, some who are extremely fortunate become the Ashraya of Rag, abode of attachment for Krishna, and they worship his lotus feet, and thus obtain the ultimate aim of Krishna Prem. In this way, they gain entry into the group of Krishna's dear associates. As the sun rays and the sun are considered one substance, similarly there is no difference between Krishna's bodily effulgence, known as Brahman, and Krishna himself. The words Tad Gatim means attaining Tat, that is Krishna, Krishna Gati. The Jnanis and the Asuras achieve Sayuja Mukti, and both attain Brahman, which is the rays of Krishna's effulgence, Krishna Kiran. The Shuddha Bhaktas develop Prem and attain service to Krishna, who is the root of all existence. Now, by removing Baya, Dvesha, Sneha and Bhakti from the above-mentioned list of six characteristics, we are left with Kam and Sambandha. Therefore, Kam and Sambandha are the only bhavs that are applicable in Rag Marg. Thus there are two types of Ragamayi Bhakti, Kama Rupa and Sambandha Rupa. Brajanath, what is the Swarup, intrinsic characteristic, of Kam Rupa Bhakti? Babaji, the word Kam signifies Sambhog Trishna, the desire for Sambhog with Krishna. This Sambhog Trishna changes into Ragatmika Bhakti, and from this, causeless loving behavior arises. In other words, Priti Sambhog is to satisfy Krishna's desires. All one's endeavors are made solely for Krishna's happiness and prosperity, without any desire for one's own happiness. Even if there is an effort for one's own pleasure, it is in accordance with Krishna's happiness. This unprecedented love is only found in the female residence of Braj. The gopi's prem is endowed with a particular wonderful sweetness, madhurya, and gives rise to many playful sports and pastimes. That is why learned scholars refer to this unique condition of love as calm, lust, although in reality the gopi's calm is aprakrit, transcendental, and completely bereft of even the slightest trace or fault. The calm of the conditioned souls is full of fault and contemptible, whereas the love of the gopis is so transcendentally pure and attractive that even such dear bhaktas as Uddhava also desire to attain it. Nothing can compare with the gopis calm. It can only be compared with itself. Kama Rupa Ragatmika Bhakti is found only in Braj and nowhere else. Kubja's calm in Mathura is not really calm, but merely rati. The calm that I am describing has no relation with that of Kubja. Brajanath, what is Sambandha Rupa Bhakti? Babaji, Sambandha Rupa Bhakti is devotion to Krishna in which one assumes an abhiman, conception and identity, such as I am Krishna's father or I am Krishna's mother. In Braja, the devotion of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda are examples of Sambandha Rupa Bhakti. One can attain one's inherent Swarup in unalloyed Prem by developing the bhavs of either Kam Rupa or Sambandha Rupa. Therefore, both these bhavs are the shelter of Nitya Siddha Bhaktas. These have only been mentioned in the analysis of Raganuga Bhakti. 
Now, you can see that there are two types of Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti, Karmanuga and Sambandhanuga. Rajanath, please explain the nature of Karmanuga in Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti. Babaji, Karmanuga is the desire to follow Kam Rupa Bhakti, of which there are two types, Samboga Ichamayi and Tad Tad Bhav Ichamayi. Brajanath, what is Sambhog Ichamayi? Babaji, Sambhog Ichamayi means the desire to engage in playful sportive pastimes, Kali, with Krishna. Krishna's transcendental sportive pastimes with the gopis are called Sambhog. Brajanath, what is Tat Tat Bhav Ichamayi? Babaji, Tat Tat Bhav Ichamayi is the desire to experience the sweet bhavs that the gopis of Braja have towards Krishna. Brajanath, how do these two kinds of Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti arise? Babaji, when a bhakta sees Sri Krishna's beautiful deity form and hears Sri Krishna's Madhurya Lila Kata, sweet pastimes, an intense hankering arises in his heart to experience those bhavs, and he then engages himself in the sadhan of Karmanuga and Sambandhanuga Raganuga Bhakti. Brajanath, Sri Krishna is male, Purush, and the gopis are all female, Prakriti. As far as I understand, only females can have the adhika for Karmanuga Raganuga Bhakti. So how can a male obtain this bhav? Babaji, jivas in this world are the abodes of five different types of relationships. Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya, according to their own inherent swabhav. Of these five, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya are found in the residence of Braj. Dasya, Sakya, and Vatsalya with fatherly instincts are male bhavs, and those who are so inclined serve Krishna in male spiritual forms. The two rasas in which the female bhav is intrinsic are Vatsalya with motherly instincts and Sringara ras or Madhurya ras the mellow of amorous love, and those who are of this nature engage in Krishna's service as females. These two kinds of swabhav exist both in Sri Krishna's eternal associates and in sadhaks who are in their anugatya, following. Brajanath, how do those who have a male form practice Raganuga sadhan with the bhav of the Brajagopis? Babaji, those who have developed taste for Sringara Ras, according to their Adhika, may be male outwardly, but their spiritual body, Siddha Sarir, has a female form. In that Siddha Sarir, they engage in Krishna's service, following in the footsteps of a particular gopi, according to their taste and inherent swabhav. Padma Purana describes males who possessed this kind of bhav. When the sages of Dandakaranya saw Sri Ramachandra's unparalleled beauty, they performed bhajan with a desire to get him as their husband. Later, they attained gopi forms in Gokul Lila and engaged in Sri Hari's service by Kam Rupa Ragamayi Bhakti. Brajanath, we have heard that the women of Gokul are Nitya Siddhas, who appear in Braj in order to give nourishment to Krishna's pastimes. If this is true, how is it consistent with the description of the Padma Purana? Babaji, those who were Nitya Siddha gopis easily participated in the Rasa dance with Sri Krishna. Others had taken birth as gopis after attaining Siddha through Kama Rupa Sadhan Bhakti. According to the shloka, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.29.8, Tavarya Mana Patibi Pritibir Bhatri Bandhu Bihi. They attained their Aprakrit Swarup by rendering Manasa Seva to Krishna. These were mainly the Maharishis of Dandakaranya. Ta Varya Manapati Bi Pitri Bir Bratrir Bandhu Bihi Govinda Prahitat Mano 
na nyavartanta mohitaha. Even though the Nitya Siddha gopis were forbidden by their husbands, fathers, mothers, and brothers, they did not stop because they were enchanted, their hearts already having been stolen by Sri Govinda. In this regard, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.23.20 is also worth studying. Brajanath, will you please explain who are the Nitya Siddha gopis and who are the Sadhan Siddha gopis? Babaji, Srimati Radharani is Sri Krishna's Swarup Shakti, and the eight principal Sakis are her first Kaya Vyuha, bodily expansions. The other Sakis follow behind as her further Kaya Vyuha. All these Sakis are Nitya Siddha. They are Swarup Shakti Tattva, not Jiva Tattva. The general Sakis of Braj, who attained perfection by performing sadhan, follow Srimati Radharani's eternal associates, Parika, and they are known as Sadhana Siddha Jivas. Having been imbued with the potency of Hladini Shakti, they attain Salokya, residence in Braj Aprakrit Lila, with the Nitya Siddha Sakis of Braj. Jivas who attain perfection by the path of Raganuga Sadhan in Sringara Ras are included amongst the Sadhana Siddha Sakis. Those who only serve Krishna according to the principles of Vidhi Marg, with the Riraṅsa desire to enjoy with Krishna for their own pleasure, gain entry into the group of Krishna's queens in Dwarka. One cannot become a follower of the Braja Gopis through the Vidhi Marg alone. However, those who behave externally according to the principles of Vidhi Marg, but who internally practice the sadhan of Rag Marg, also obtain Braja Seva. Brajanath, how can one fulfill the desire for enjoyment, Ramana or Riramksa? Babaji, those who have the mood of Krishna's queens, Mahishi Bhav, towards him, desire to give up the quality of shamelessness, Dristata, and engage in Krishna's service, just as a housewife. They do not want to serve like the beautiful Braja Sundaris. Brajanath, please explain this subject more clearly. Babaji, Mahishi Bhav is the sadhan seva in which one cherishes the spiritual self-conception that Krishna is one's own husband. The relationship that is established with Sri Krishna when one attains this Mahishi Bhav is known as Swakya, marital love. Those who have Mahishi Bhav in the stage of sadhan do not experience the parakya ras, paramor mellow, of the gopis of Braja, and this is why they cannot follow the gopis in parakya bhav. Therefore, the only way to attain Braja ras is to practice Raganuga sadhan bhakti in the parakya bhav. Brajanath, by your mercy, I have understood up to this point. Now please explain the difference between calm and prem. If the two are non-different, then can't Prem Rupa be used instead of Kam Rupa? The word Kam sounds somewhat harsh. Babaji, there is some difference between Kam and Prem. Prem is the same as Sambanda Rupa Ragamayi Bhakti. There is no difference between those two. In Sambanda Rupa Bhakti, there is no Kam, in other words, no desire for Sambhog. It is Prem without playful sporting pastimes, Kali. Prem becomes Kam Rupa Bhakti when it is combined with the desire for Sambhog. Kam Rupa Bhakti is not present in any other Ras. It is found only in the Sringara Ras of the Braja Devis. Kam in this material world takes the form of sense gratification, and it is quite different from Aprakrit Kam. The calm of this material world is only a perverted reflection or transformation of the faultless aprakrit calm. Even Kupja's bhav cannot be called direct calm, although it is directed towards Krishna. Jadiya calm, lust in relation to inert lifeless matter, is based on sense gratification, and it is only a transformation of misery. It is worthless and contemptible. In contrast, 
calm based on Prem, is full of ananda, and it is supremely valuable and always joyful. Since prakrit calm, worldly lust, is insignificant and abominable, you should have no hesitation in using the word aprakrit calm, transcendental lust. Brajanath, now please explain Raganuga Bhakti that is based on relationship, Sambandha Rupa. Babaji, Sambandha Nuga Bhakti has the mood of being related to Krishna, and this relationship may be one of three types, in Dasya, servitude, in Sakya, friendship, or in Vatsalya, parental. I am Krishna's servant, and Krishna is my master. I am Krishna's friend. I am Krishna's mother or father. All these moods are called relationship. Sambandha Nuga Bhakti is preeminently displayed only in the inhabitants of Braj. Brajanath How does one cultivate Raganuga Bhakti in the mood of a servant, friend or parent? Babaji One who has awakened taste for Dasyuras follows Krishna's eternal servants such as Raktak and Patrak and serves Krishna by following their particular mood of service imbued with Madhuri above. One whose taste is towards Sakyaras serves Krishna by following the Bhav sentiment and chaste endeavors of one of Krishna's Priya Sakas such as Subal. One whose taste is towards Vatsalyaras engages in Krishna's service by following the Bhav and activities of Bhaktas such as Nanda and Yasoda who have parental relationship with him. Brajanath what does it mean to follow Anukarana, the Chasta and Bhavs? Babaji, according to one's eternal inherent nature, Siddha Bhav, towards Krishna, some specific Bhavs and Chasta endeavors arise, and Vyavahara activities are also manifested along with them. A sadhak performing Sambandha Nuga Bhakti engages himself in Krishna's service by following these Bhavs, Chaista and Vyavahara. For instance, Nanda Maharaj has the mood of paternal affection towards Krishna, so one should follow all the endeavors he makes to please Krishna, guided by the mood of paternal affection, but one should never consider that he himself is Nanda, Yasoda, Subal or Raktak. Rather one should simply follow the barbs of these great bhaktas according to one's own taste, Otherwise, it will be an offense. Brajanath What type of Raganuga Bhakti do we have the Adhika to adopt? Babaji My son, you should scrutinize your own Swabhav, and then you will see the corresponding type of devotion for which you are qualified. A particular taste will awaken according to your inherent Swabhav, and you should pursue the Rasa that is indicated by that taste. In order to cultivate that ras, you should follow one of Krishna's eternal associates who is perfect in it. To determine rasa, it is only necessary to examine your own taste. If your taste is towards the path of rag, then you should act according to that taste. And as long as inclination has not awakened for the path of rag, you should simply execute the principles of Vaidhi Bhakti with firm faith. Vijay Prabhu, I have been studying Srimad Bhagavatam for a long time, and I listen to Krishna Leela whenever and wherever I find the opportunity. Whenever I deliberate on Krishna Leela, a strong bhav arises within my heart to serve the divine couple as Lalita Devi does. Babaji, you need not say any more. You are a manjari, young maidservant of Lalita Devi. Which service do you like? Vijay, I desire that Srimati Lalita Devi should grant me permission to string garlands of flowers. I shall string lovely garlands of beautiful, delicate flowers and place them in Lalita Saki's lotus hands. She will look upon me with an infinitely merciful, love-laden glance, and then she will place the garlands around the necks of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Babaji, I give you my blessings that you may attain perfection in the goal for which you are undertaking your sadhan. 
When Vijay heard Babaji Mahashai's affectionate benediction, he fell at the lotus feet of his preceptor and wept. Seeing his emotional state, Babaji said, Go on continually practicing Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti with this same feeling, and externally follow the conduct laid down according to the rules of Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti in a regular way. When Brajanath saw Vijay Kumar's spiritual wealth, he folded his hands and humbly said, My master, whenever I meditate on Sri Krishna's pastimes, a desire arises in my heart to serve him by following in the footsteps of Subal. Babaji, which service do you like? Brajanath, when the calves wander far off to graze, I would very much like to bring them back in the company of Subal. When Krishna sits in a place to play upon his flute, I will take the permission of Subal to let the cows drink water, and then I will bring them to Bai, brother Krishna. This is my heart's desire. Babaji, I give you the benediction that you will attain Krishna's service as a follower of Subal. You are eligible to cultivate the sentiment of friendship, Sakya Ras. It is wonderful that from that day on, within Vijay Kumar's mind, the feeling began to sprout that he was a maidservant, Dasi, of Srimati Lalita Devi, and he began to look upon Srila Babaji Maharaj as the personification of Sri Lalita Devi. Vijay, O oh Master, what more remains to be known about this subject? Please give your order. Babaji, Nothing more remains. You need only know the name, form, dress, and so on of your Siddha Sarira. Come to me alone at another time, and I shall tell you all these things. Vijay Kumar offered Dandavat Pranam at the feet of his preceptor and replied, As my master pleases. From that day on, Brajanath began to look upon Babaji as a personification of Subal. Babaji said to Brajanath, You also come to me alone at another time, and I will tell you the name, form, dress, and ornaments of your spiritual body. Brajanath offered Dandavat Pranam and said, As my master pleases. Brajanath and Vijay Kumar acknowledged their great good fortune, and from that day on they happily engaged in their spiritual practice of Raganuga Sadhan. Externally, everything remained as before, but their inner emotions had changed. Externally, Vijay Kumar behaved only as a man, but internally, he was imbued with the female nature, Stribhav. While within Brajanath appeared, the inherent Svabhav of a cowherd boy. The night was far advanced. Both of them returned home, chanting on their Japamala, the Maha Mantra, that they had received from their preceptor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It was midnight, and the lovely moonlight appeared like a shower of whitish silver upon the earth. An intoxicating breeze blew from the Malayan mountain, creating a very pleasant sensation for the mind. They sat down together beneath an Angvala tree, in a beautiful secluded place near Lakshman Tila, and began a discussion. Vijay Brajanath our heart's desires have been fulfilled. We shall certainly be blessed with Krishna's mercy by the grace of the Vaishnavas. Let us now decide our future course of action. Tell me frankly, what do you want to do? Do you want to marry, or do you want to become a mendicant? I don't want to put any pressure on you. I just want you to let me know your real intention, so that I can communicate it to your mother. Brajanath Uncle I regard you very highly, and besides that, you are an erudite scholar and a Vaishnava. You have been my guardian since my father passed away, and I am prepared to act according to your order. I am nervous about marriage, because I don't want to become entangled in the material world and fall down from my realization of the supreme spiritual reality. What is your opinion? Vijay, I don't want to impose anything on you. You have to decide for yourself. Brajanath, it will be proper for me to receive Gurudev's instruction 
and act accordingly. Vijay, that's a good idea. Tomorrow we shall take Prabhupada's decision on this subject. Brajanath, uncle, what is your consideration? Will you remain as a grihasta or become a mendicant? Vijay, my son, like you, I am also undecided. I sometimes think of giving up grihasta dharma and becoming a mendicant, and sometimes I think that if I do so, my heart may become dried up, so that I am deprived of bhakti ras as well. I think it is appropriate to take Sri Gurudev's order in this regard and act accordingly. I shall do as he instructs me. Realizing that the night was far advanced, uncle and nephew returned home, chanting Hari Nam. Then, after honoring Prasad, they took rest. Thus ends the twenty-first chapter of Jaiva Dharma, entitled Pramaya, Abhideya, Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti.